with Legion and Gifted, um, they're totally different um, in their relationship to the, to, to the movies. Gifted is actually in within roughly the universe of the films, um, and Legion that Noah Hawley created is entirely its own thing. It plays by its own rules. When when someone here was talking about like giving away secrets, like I couldn't give away secrets to Legion because like I think the only person that fully understands is, is Noah. Um, <laughs> so like I'm like the fans, where I'm like I have theories about what's happening, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Tell me something, and don't screw with me, okay? Am I? Am I really here? Because if I'm not, and I wake up back there. With him. And you're here. Hey, you're here. With me. And I won't let anything bad happen to you. I'm curious when it comes to expanding these worlds, whether it's, uh, you know, a spin-off or a... I think you've worked on, like, nine X-Men? I don't films? know. I honestly <laughs> have lost track. Yes. <laughs> if you count Deadpool and the Logan yeah, movies, yeah. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> he knows yeah, that, too. Exactly. So, Simon, maybe you can start by telling okay. me, when is it too much? Is there a time where... I hope I, never, I, is the answer. <laughs> um, I, the honest answer is, well, first of all, the source material in this particular case, in terms of the X-Men, has, has survived for decades, and there are hundreds or thousands of characters that you could really deep dive into. Obviously, we don't want to go into all of them. But what we have found in terms of doing standalone movies, or whatever you want to call them, spin-offs, or like Logan, like Deadpool, is that um, we do those uh, when we feel as, and I think it's an important thing in general for genre, when we feel as though we can smuggle a different genre into the sort of super genre of the comic book movie. So Logan obviously was Western, and uh, Deadpool was kind of like a Monty Python comedy, R-rated comedy, at a time when R-rated comedies were not being made, at a time when Westerns were certainly not being made at the price point that we could make Logan for. So for us it was, if we're going to expand um, and tell different kinds of stories sort of coming off of the main line of the X-Men, they have to really be genuinely different kinds of stories, not just cheaper versions of an X-Men movie. Uh, and so we really have embraced Emma Watts, as present production at, at, at Fox, has, has been instrumental in this, each time defining for ourselves what is the subgenre that we are telling within the supergenre of a comic book adaptation mm -hmm. or a superhero movie. And I think that's where you, as an artist, where you can really start to have fun because you get all these, so f it's happening in Hollywood now, and everybody can speak to this, and it's one of the reasons why everyone around this table is lucky enough to get stuff made, is that genre material, whether it's horror or science fiction or thriller or action, uh, is sort of pushed out a lot of drama. Um, mm -hmm. Studios mm -hmm. are making less and less dramas, they're mm -hmm. even making less and less comedies. And so if you can smuggle those kinds of movies, what, we, what used to be called sort of mid, mid-size movies, the $50 million drama doesn't exist anymore, the $50 million comedy rarely exists anymore. If you can smuggle that and some of those themes into this very digestible um, you know, genre, then you can have more fun. Hollywood, uh, in a way, I think, um, teaches Beats compromise. The out of Te you. Teaches, <laughs> teaches compromise, and like compromise is actually just a yeah. nice word for surrender. And I think the 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 sort of um, what you're talking like the blind um, faith in oneself gets beaten out of you. Uh, yeah. At a certain point, but if you take enough chances and are right enough of the time, and it's sort of like baseball, if like one out of three is like Hall of Fame, right. you know, like if you're a three thirty three hitter, you're a Hall of Fame hitter. Um, so if you're right enough, I think that people start to trust that they, they will go with your. Like, I mean, another example for me that isn't self serving, but is about Ryan Reynolds on Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Deadpool was a script, a project that was around for over ten years, mm -hmm. and Ryan um, and the writers Rhett and Paul. Uh, and the director, uh, Tim Miller, of the first movie, just kept on that film. And they wrote a PG-13 version, and they wrote a script that had uh, comic book images and all kinds of other concept art in it, and it just wouldn't get made and wouldn't get in because there were no R-rated superhero movies at the time. Um, and it was a kind of groundbreaking, original, fresh, different kind of comic book film. Um, and so, so finally, sort of, it took the collective force and the compromise of, okay, fine, we'll do it for a fraction of what these other movies are made for, mm -hmm. for the studio to say yes. And then once that worked, then it was like, okay, well, you can make as many as you want in a very different budget. <laughs>